Hi, Squid Squad. It's me, Stacy, here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, hanging out with our topics of the day. Yes, you're right. We are going to be checking out penguins today. So thanks so much for joining us here at our Summer Kids Club at the Aquarium of the Pacific. All right. Are you ready? We're going to be making observations about penguins. Now, mostly when we make observations, it really means we're exploring. So I want you to be using your eyes. You might even use your ears. I don't think we're going to use our noses to smell any penguins today. They smell very interesting, just so you know, if you weren't aware. Um, we definitely won't be petting penguins or tasting them, but those are other ways that you can explore other things. Now, since we're going to be exploring and observing these penguins here, I would love to hear some of those observations or even questions. And the way that you can send this over is just to text us. So the number is right down here. It's 562-286-1838. So we would love to hear from you. Now, for our younger viewers out there, just make sure that you have adults uh, permission out there. So that way, uh, you know, they know what's going on. Also, because sometimes uh, text messages might cost a little bit. So you definitely want to ask for permission. Now, if you are watching this after the fact, or maybe you've thought about penguins, it's been a little bit, maybe you're just about to go to bed and you have some more questions that you want us to answer, all you need to do is email us. Our email address is also down there. It's live at lbaop.org. All right, are you ready? Let's take a look at some penguins. Now these penguins right here are the ones that live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. These ones are called Magellanic penguins. And they're doing all kinds of really fun things. Now, if you ever wanted to check out what our penguins are up to, you can actually see that. We have our live uh, webcam. So there are cameras inside the exhibit. We have a camera that looks from this view, so it's kind of overhead. We also have a camera in the water. So if they're diving and swimming in the water, you can actually watch them. It's pretty cool. All you need to do is go to our website and look up webcam. There's all kinds of webcams there, including our penguin ones, of course. Now, we're going to get back to our little penguins. First, where I really want us to start is to like, take a look at a penguin that we are all super duper familiar with. Let's see if we can learn about penguins just by looking at them. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a penguin. Hmm, does this look familiar to you? I bet it does. These are very, very popular penguins. They are called emperor penguins. You know what's really cool about emperor penguins? I'm not a very tall person, but they're almost as tall as me. So they're actually really big birds. Now, what is something that you notice about the penguins in this picture here? What do you see? Now, we're going to be looking at the penguins, but I also want you to look at the habitat, okay? So first, looking at the habitat, what is this right here? If you're saying it's ice or snow, nice job. Yeah, so this is ice and snow. This is what we're used to seeing penguins, and a lot of times when you see penguins, it's emperor penguins, and their habitat is Antarctica. Antarctica is this big uh, mass of land. It's a continent at the bottom of our planet where it's very, very cold. And that is where you see a lot of ice and a lot of snow. So these penguins need to have ice and snow to survive because again, it's their habitat. Their bodies are made to live in this space. Okay, so now we know this penguin lives in icy, snowy, cold, cold uh, places. Now, let's learn about the penguins themselves. What do you notice about our penguins here? Well, one of the things that I noticed right away are the colors, right? Now, wait a minute. I'm looking at two different kinds. At least they look really different. Did you notice that this one right here has different colors? and it's a different size than this one. What size is this one? It's taller. This one is a little shorter, okay? What about colors? This one is white there, black there, 
And look at this, there's yellow and there's orange right here in its neck, also on its beak. But what about this one? I see a lot of gray, some lighter gray. There's some white on its face and some black on its face. Do you see any orange or yellow on its face? No. Hmm, why do they look so different? Here's a hint. They're different ages too. These ones are grown-ups. So this is what an emperor penguin grown-up looks like. These ones are babies. So it's a, it's a very young one. Now they're still quite tall because penguin babies grow really, really fast. They do have to grow very fast. Um, so that way they're ready to be like grown-up penguins and swim in the ocean and catch food and all of that sort of stuff. So they have to grow super duper duper fast. But take a look at how different the babies are from their parents. But it's a neat thing to be able to see, right? So we have just explored this picture to see its habitat and also a little bit more about these birds here. Okay, shall we look at another kind of penguin? Let's look at another kind of penguin and do the same thing. We are going to make some observations of its habitat and also a little bit more um, looking at the penguin itself. Now, let's remember what they look like. Everybody study them real, real quick. Study, 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 study. We know what they look like. We know what they look like. Okay, let's move on. What about this next one? Ah, hi, buddy. <laughs> I love this penguin. It's super, super cute. Now, this is a little different, right? There's not a whole bunch here. I only see one penguin in this picture. That's one thing that I see that's different. Okay, now, first, let's look at its habitat. Is it the same or is it different than the last one? To me, it kind of looks the same. Yeah, I see a lot of like icy, snowy type of, of habitat. Okay, cool. So its home, its habitat is ice and snow. The same as the emperor penguin. Now let's take a look at the bird. Is it the same or is it different than the emperor penguin? What makes it the same? One thing that I see that's the same, it has two feet and it's standing up on the two feet just like the emperor penguin. It has wings like the emperor penguin. The colors are kind of alike, right? They have um, black and they have white here. But wait a minute, I see something that's different. There's a color that's different here than on the other one, right? So the other one, the emperor penguin had orange and yellow. Do you see any orange and yellow here? Not really, and the eyes look a little bit different too. These ones are kind of bright looking. So that's really interesting. This is one way that we know that this is a different kind of penguin. They're super cute, right? The Adelis, they're one of my favorites. <laughs> they're also much, much smaller than the emperor penguin. Okay, cool. So now we've looked at two different penguins. We've seen some things that are the same and some things that are different. Let's look at one more penguin. We're gonna do the same thing, okay? We're looking at the habitat, and we're looking to see what's the same and what's different about this penguin. Ready? Here we go. Whoa. Okay. Hmm. First, we're looking at the habitat. Is there anything the same, or is there anything different? Well, I see this. These, to me, look like rocks. That's not ice and snow. These are rocks, right? And they actually look like volcanic rocks because there's lots of holes. So that's kind of interesting. So they don't really look like ice, snow, cold, right? And, and then what do you see back here? What do you think this is? I see blue and I bet you it's water. Penguins do rely a lot on water. So these penguins here live where there is lots and lots of rocks and lots and lots of water. But do you see any ice? Do you see any snow? Not really. So these are a little bit different. These Galapagos penguins live where it's a little bit warmer. Actually, it's a whole lot warmer <laughs> than Antarctica, where our other two penguins live. That's one thing that's really interesting. Their habitat is very different, okay? So let's look at the penguins. How do they look the same? Well, they have those two little feet that they're standing on. That's a penguin thing. They have the little wings, another penguin thing. They have a beak. 
What about the colors? Do we see colors that are the same or different or both? I see um, black and white. Okay, so it's kind of similar in color, but wait a minute, its face colors are a little different, aren't they? So it doesn't have the orange and yellow. It's not just black and white either. I see a little bit of maybe some pink or some peach color. So that's really interesting. So they are a little bit different and they are, uh, their bodies are different too because their bodies match their habitat, right? So these penguins are really good and, and adapted to live in a habitat that looks like this. If we took one of these penguins and put them in the snow, they wouldn't do so well because it's not what they're made for. They're made for this habitat here. So that's a really interesting thing. So uh, we have some penguins in our world that live on ice and snow. And we have some penguins in our world that live where there's a lot of rocks and ocean, but no ice. Now, what about the penguins that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific? Shall we look at them and see what kind of habitat they live in? And then we can learn a little bit more about penguins in general. So let's see. The penguins we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we saw them in the very beginning. They're called Magellanic penguins. So they are penguins um, that live in South America. Now let's take a look at the habitat. What do you see here? Do you see ice and snow or do you see more like rocks? Um, it's, it's a little bit more like rocks. You can see the rocks really easily down here, right? And there's some water right there. Excellent. Now, what about colors? Which one do they match the best? Well, I'm seeing some black and white. So it seems like a lot of penguins are black and white, which is interesting. Um, but I also see a little bit of pink on their face. So they're a little bit more like our Galapagos penguins. And that's true. They do like warmer weather. That's actually why they do pretty well here. Ooh, Nice. <laughs> That's actually why they do a little uh, really well here in Southern California. They actually live outside, but that's okay because they're not supposed to be around snow. It's not what their bodies are made for. So remember, if we took them and put them in snow, they wouldn't handle it very well. They need to live in a slightly warmer habitat. Now, if they do get too warm, because right now we're experiencing a heat wave, it's pretty warm here. Um, they just need to cool off by jumping in the water. This water is nice and cool. We keep it nice and cold so that way they do have a place that they can cool off if they need to. So that's one of the reasons why they look so wet. Now, what are these penguins doing? Oh, that one's wiggling. I love that little tail wiggle. Oh, so cute. What are they doing? Huh. This one's kind of doing something similar, but this one's doing that on their back and that one's doing that on their, their side there. These penguins are called, uh, it's called preening. They're actually cleaning their feathers. Now, right now is kind of an interesting time for our Magellanic penguins. This is a time where they molt. A molt means they're getting a whole new outside. Now, what is on the outside of a penguin? What is this? What are they covered in? Is that fur? Like a dog? No, it's not fur because they're birds, right? What are birds covered in? They're covered in feathers. Now, penguins have lots and lots of feathers, and they have so many feathers that it actually keeps them warm in this cold water that they swim around in and hunt in. So their feathers are really, really important. Now, those feathers do wear out over time because feathers are pretty delicate, so they have to grow new feathers. Now, this is what happens uh, when they molt. All of the feathers that you see, these are all old feathers, and those old feathers are replaced by the new ones all at the same time. We call this, this is crazy, a catastrophic molt. Catastrophic. All of those feathers are gonna get replaced. So our little penguin buddies here are a little bit uncomfortable because replacing all of your feathers takes a lot of energy. It's kind of itchy too. And so that's why they're kind of itchy. They're a little bit uncomfortable, but this is natural for them. This is what they do. And when they're done molting, all of the old feathers are going to be gone. They're going to grow in all kinds of new feathers. They look shiny. They look clean. And all those feathers are going to protect them from cold, cold water. Because if they have too much exposure to cold, they wouldn't survive. All right? So it's a very interesting thing. Now, uh, Kancha is asking, how big do Adelie penguins get? Ah, that's a great question. We said they're small, right? 
Well, let's see if we can take a look at that Adelia again. Well, let's see. It's hard to tell in a picture how big anything is, but they're about two feet tall. So, <laughs> so not that big, but, um, but yeah, I'm actually taller than Adelie's. I feel like that's a win. <laughs> All right. So great question, Concha. Thank you so much for, uh, for sending in that question. Now let's go take a look at my document camera. It's actually a special camera really close look at some kind of things of detail, some small things, because I want us to explore those feathers. So we said that those feathers are important because those feathers are keeping them warm. Now it's especially important for the snowy, snowy peng uh, penguins that live in the snowy, snowy habitat, right? So here are some feathers. Oh, let me get some light on here so that way we can see them a little bit better. And we're going to zoom in. Woohoo! Look at that. So this is how far we're zoomed in. You can see my fingers there. Ooh, nobody wants to look at that. Well, take a look at that little feather. What do you notice about the feather? Let's see, I notice there's this thing in the middle, right? That thing in the middle is what gives the feather some structure. It's actually tough. It's a little bit on the hard side and all the little fluffy bits are coming out from it. But look how fluffy that is. Wow, that is really fluffy. And then did you notice how the end here is different from this end over here? So this end over here is actually the part that's in their skin, just like our, um, our hair comes from our skin. So like if you looked at like the hair that's growing in your arm, the hair comes from your skin, right? So there's a little, there's like a little hole almost in your skin, a follicle, and that's where the hair comes from. And it's the same thing for birds. They have almost like a little hole, hole in their skin, and that's where the feather comes out. So this is the part that would be in their skin, and this would grow out, and then this is the dark end of the feather. But do you notice that even though this is the dark end, maybe this is from their back or, or their wings, the inside of it is fluffy and white. So that's a really interesting thing. Now what's cool about that fluffy white part of these feathers is that this fluffy white part connects to the next feather's fluffy white part. So in, in a way, they really stick together. And that's a good thing because when they stick together, if there's enough of them, and there really are a lot on penguins, uh, a lot of feathers on penguins, but when there's enough of them, it actually blocks water from getting to their skin. That's kind of crazy because if you were to go in, say, a, a pool or in the ocean and you're, you got your head wet, like you put your head in the water, your scalp, so the skin on the top of your head gets very wet because we have hair, but we don't have a ton of hair, right? But for penguins, they have so many feathers that it actually stops the water. It makes the water stay on the outside of their bodies and it doesn't get to their skin. That's how it stays warm from that cold water because the cold water never touches their skin. And that means that there's air in there and that air can stay warm because of the heat coming from their bodies. So these feathers are incredibly important. And that's again, why they need to grow new ones every single day. Look at how they just kind of fit together so nicely. And they really do kind of stick together, right? So these feathers are pretty cool. I think penguin feathers are really unique. Now. I did say they're unique. Well, then maybe we should take a look at another kind of feather to see how it is different from other bird feathers. So let's see, I have another bird feather here. This bird, uh, this feather is, um, let's see, I think this one is, I think it's from our parrot named Lola. Ooh, let's zoom out because let's look at that. It looks pretty different, doesn't it? So there are some things that are similar, right? The things that are the same, it has that hard part in the middle there that gives it the structure. It also is kind of floofier on the outside, but it's not quite as fluffy because they don't, uh, this kind of bird doesn't have to dive in water and keep the water away from its skin. So the, the uh, fluffiness in it is very, very different. It's also very big, isn't it? This is much, much bigger than the tiny little penguin feathers that we have here. Now, the actual size of Lola, our sulfur-crested cockatoo, is not that big. 
it's not like it's an enormous uh, bird, but it does have really, really big feathers. Now, if you are curious to see what Lola looks like, I recommend taking a look at some of our social media posts. We actually have, or, or even on YouTube, I believe we have a, a video of Lola going on a field trip around the aquarium where he gets to see other birds. And you'll also learn what Lola's favorite animal is. Lola's a pretty cool bird, but definitely not a penguin. So we're gonna get back to penguins. Now, let's see, we have a question here from Shinja. Shinja is asking, what do penguins do with their old feathers? Ah, that is a fantastic question because they get rid of them, right? Okay, let's see if we can go back to our, um, our exhibit here at the aquarium. So we took a look, a really close look at those feathers, which is really cool. Okay, so back on our exhibit, we have our penguins that are molting. So that means they have to get rid of all those feathers. They just basically fall out of them. Now, what happens is all of this penguin beach, we call it penguin beach, is covered in feathers. And our, our uh, husbandry folks, the people who take care of these penguins, have to clean it up. Now, in the ocean, that happens too, and you're just going to find feathers everywhere. It almost looks like there was a giant pillow fight with feathery pillows that didn't stick together. There's feathers all over the place. But these penguins don't really need those feathers because, remember, those are the old ones that they don't really have any use for. So they just fall out, and then they have those beautiful new feathers. Great question. Okay, so, um, so that's really interesting about our penguin friends here. So we know that uh, they're kind of, they're preening, they're keeping their feathers clean, they, um, and, and they're a little bit itchy because of that molt. Well, this is also a time, molting season is also a time that they don't eat very much. Because if their feathers are not in perfect condition, they might get too cold if they were out in the ocean for too long. Now, since here at the aquarium, the beach is so close to the water, they actually do go in the water a lot. And then they can go right on to the beach again. They don't get too cold. They can, they can regulate their own temperature that way. Um, but in the ocean, out in the wild, they actually will often go up on land and stay up on land. And that means they're going to go for a really long time without eating. Because what do you think a penguin would eat? Do you think they eat bugs? I think bugs would be pretty tough for a penguin to catch, right? Especially a flying bug. Penguins don't fly. So maybe not bugs. Do you think they eat plants? Well, let's take a look at the habitat. I don't see too many plants there. So probably not plants. Penguins eat a lot of things that live in the ocean. Things like small fish, sometimes small fish, <laughs> and sometimes krill. Krill is a, a little creature that looks like a little shrimp, but it's itty bitty. So those are the kinds of things that penguins eat, depending on the type of penguin. Because remember, their habitats are really different. And so uh, you might have different types of fish that live where the, the warm weather penguins are than the cold weather penguins. So uh, most of the time, though, they are going to eat things like little fish. And sure enough, our penguins eat little fish. So that means they have to go swimming out into the ocean to catch those fish to eat them. Okay? Now, if a penguin is going up on the beach and molting, that means they have to go a long time without eating. So what they do instead is just before they're ready to molt, they eat a lot of food. I mean, a lot of food. It's like Thanksgiving every day for weeks. It's crazy. But this is good, right? They're going to gain a lot of weight. They're going to get as much fat as they can from the really healthy fish that they're eating. And then they're going to do this. Lay on the beach. Or this over here. Stand on the beach. And they're waiting to make all those feathers change out. And so they don't need to go in the water to go hunting. Now here at the aquarium, because we actually bring their food to them, we do still feed them this time of year. We still offer them food so they can eat if they want to. They don't actually have to go hunt like they would have to do in the ocean. So when we do bring them food, their appetite is not usually as big right now as it was, say, a month ago. A month ago, they were trying to store up all that fat. So they don't Maybe they won't eat as much, but we do offer them food and allow them to eat if they want to. Now, when we do feed these penguins, we do uh, take notes of everything they eat because they do eat quite a lot of food, but we want to know how much everybody is eating so we can help 
make sure that they stay nice and healthy. Now, how do you think they catch fish? Well, at the aquarium, it's easy, right? We hand them a fish, they eat the fish. Done. They actually swallow it whole. They don't chew. They don't even take bites. They swallow the whole fish at once. So little fish, easy. But some of them can even eat fish that are pretty good size. It's surprising almost how big those fish are when they eat. So they can actually catch fish using their beaks. So they swim around in the water. They're actually very, very fast swimmers. Wait, how do they swim around in the water? What do you think they're using to push themselves through water? Do you think they're using their little wings? Or do you think they're using their little feet? Well, it depends on how they're swimming in the water. When the penguins hang out on the surface of the water, they float on their bellies. They basically look like this, but just pretend that the rocks here are water. And they use their little feet to paddle around. They have webbed feet, which means their skin between their toes, and it makes paddles so they can push through the water really, really well. It's almost like having fins. But when they dive into the water, they actually flap their wings to push themselves through the water. So they flap their wings and it pushes them through the water and they can be very, very fast, which allows them to catch those fish for them to eat. Now, fish are incredibly slippery. I don't know if you have ever tried to hold a fish. So if you've ever tried to hold a fish, I don't recommend it all the time. Probably depends on what you're going to do with that fish to begin with. But if you ever try to hold a fish, it's incredibly slippery. And so for a penguin to grab it in its beak, um, it might be able to hold it in its beak, but then it has to swallow the fish whole, right? Well, that fish is very, very slippery. So the penguin actually needs some help to get the fish to go down into its tummies instead of out and into the water. And take a look inside the penguin's mouth. This penguin has given us a nice big smile. I just love it. And look at inside its mouth. What do you notice in there? Well, I see that it's very pink, but what else do you notice? Look at those spines. Yeah, they have these things that look kind of like spines and they point into the mouth. So that way a slippery fish cannot slip out. It just goes down to their tummies. So it's a really interesting thing that these penguins have to help them eat. Shinja wants to know how long it takes for new feathers to grow in. That is a really good question. It takes a while, usually about two weeks or so, um, or maybe even up to like a month. So it does take some time. And some of that preparation happens before we even really know it's happening. Remember how they have to eat a lot of food? That's getting ready to molt. So they have to eat a lot of food. It also gives them that energy to make those new feathers inside their bodies. Um, and then those, the old feathers basically get pushed out by the new feathers. Sometimes some of our penguins even um, have bare spots. They, they have like little like, like naked penguin spots. It's, it's kind of silly, <laughs> but eh, it works. Uh, Kancha is asking, do penguins ever overeat? That is a great question. You know, um, I don't know if they really do. I mean, I guess they probably could a little bit. Um, we do watch their diet, so I think if somebody is eating too much, we can like slow down how much we're giving that penguin just to make sure that it stays healthy. But um, there is so much energy that they need to survive that I think they use a lot of the energy that they're eating just to just to be. And so I think that's why it's not super easy for them to overeat. I think at the aquarium, it'd be much easier for them to overeat than it would be out in the ocean. So Interesting question. I've never thought about that before. I love this. All right. So thank you, little penguin, for that super duper cute smile. Now, we've learned a lot about penguins, right? We've been able to explore not only penguins that live here at the aquarium on, um, on rocky, uh, in rocky habitats, but even penguins that live in the snowy habitats as well. And each of these penguins have their own special way of being able to survive. A lot of them like to hang out with buddies because when you hang out with buddies, you have a little bit of protection out there. A lot of them have figured out the best kinds of foods for them to eat. And of course... Here's kind of a fun thing just because I'm looking at it right now. Do you see how the snow looks a slightly different color than the snow over here? Well, what do you think caused that? It's not just dirt, my friends. <laughs> These penguins
ones have to go to the bathroom. And when they're walking around, eh, sometimes that just happens. But here's the cool thing. This is the last tidbit I'm going to share with you. Here's the cool thing about penguin poop, especially in snow. You can actually locate where penguins live by satellite from space. So there are satellites, basically robots, out in space that are looking down on our Earth at all kinds of different things. But scientists have been looking for penguin poop. These satellites are looking down at Antarctica, at all of this ice and snow, and where they see stains of penguin poop, they know that's where the penguins are living. So we've actually been able to identify more groups of penguins than we ever could by just exploring by boat. So you can make observations and explore um, uh, in, from space, you can do it from a boat, you can even do it yourself just by looking around at wherever you might be. Now you might not be able to explore the world of penguins where you live, but I bet you there's some other things to investigate too, like maybe some beetles, butterflies, maybe squirrels if you're really lucky. So there's so many things that we can do just by making observations and comparing things. How is this thing and this thing the same? How is it different? Thank you so much for joining us here for our Summer Kids Camp, everybody, Summer Kids Club. Um, I want to take one last look at our little penguin friends here. Again, you can take a look at them whenever you want just by visiting our webcams. All right, everybody, thanks so much for visiting and, and <laughs> for, for joining us. Bye.